Hi, and thank you for watching this video. I've been asked to do an analysis on the latest edition of The Economist magazine titled The World in 2019. And so this is what this series will cover. I started out with having just a single video in mind, but there is so much on this cover that I decided to split the information over more than one video in order to get some of this out sooner rather than later. My goal in making this series is to expose the plans of the elite that they put out in plain sight for everyone to see. I do this by drawing connections between what I see happening in the world, what we are shown through Bible prophecy, as well as studying the plans of the enemy that they share with the unsuspecting masses. Researching some of the images that are depicted on the latest cover of The Economist magazine certainly hints at what we are shown in Bible prophecy as far as the period known as the Tribulation is concerned. For those who have been patiently waiting for the Rapture, this video is meant to encourage you to continue to be expectant of the Blessed Hope which we are promised to receive soon. For those who believe that the Rapture is Satanic or the Doctrine of Demons, please make a copy of the series for yourself and keep it safe as it contains information that will assist you when you enter the tribulation and there is no assurance of whether the internet or YouTube will remain available once the tribulation starts. Even if you have a different view than me about the rapture, the world, or a different interpretation of what you believe the Bible tells us, I would urge you to watch this series until the end as there are many aspects that are of great importance and that may help you to understand what happens in the days or weeks or months ahead, and even what to expect during the tribulation. The globalists are following a plan that was articulated back in 1871 by Albert Pike, a 33rd degree Freemason and member of the Illuminati. What we are shown on the latest cover of The Economist magazine would seem to further confirm some of the aspects of this plan that I will get into as we continue. The Economist magazine is owned by the Rothschilds family. They are globalists and part of the elite who own the banks of the world and who are using the money that they make through interest, taxes and inflation to steer the world in the direction that their master or the god of this world, Satan, needs it to go in order to bring about a new world order under the rulership of the Antichrist. This is also, in my opinion, a great pyramid scheme in which the bottom layers of this pyramid, represented by the average working citizen, is constantly feeding the top, represented by those who are doing the bidding of Satan, to the point where the bottom finally completely collapses. This also forms part of the enemy's plan and I believe the yellow vest protests that started in France represents the beginning of this global collapse of the pyramid. There is something very important to understand when it comes to the kingdoms of the world. When Jesus was tempted by Satan, Satan offered him the kingdoms of the world in exchange for his worship, but Jesus refused to submit to this request. However, what we do not always notice is that Jesus did not refute Satan's claim to be in full control of the kingdoms of the world, as can be seen in the following passage. And the devil taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. In the book of Daniel, we also see how Daniel explains to King Nebuchadnezzar the different kingdoms of this world over time. This was done through the image of a statue in which Nebuchadnezzar represented the head of gold and the start of this worldly kingdom system, which is finally turned to dust when a rock cut without hands hits the statue on its feet 
and then replaces these kingdoms with a new everlasting one that fills the entire earth. Both these instances from the word of God show us that the kingdoms of this world were under Satan's legal or rightful ownership at the time when Jesus was tempted, since Jesus did not refute Satan's claim to them. Satan took ownership of the kingdoms of the world when man decided to disobey God in the Garden of Eden. Humanity, who had dominion over the earth, delivered that dominion into Satan's hand by disobeying the only commandment that was given to us by God at the time. The Word of God also shows us when the kingdoms of the world will be taken from Satan and given back to the new rightful owner, Jesus Christ, who was the only person able to pay the required price for them. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. Only when the seventh trumpet mentioned in the book of Revelation is sounded, and when Christ returns to the earth at his second coming, will the kingdoms of the earth be taken from Satan, and become the kingdoms of Israel's true Messiah, Jesus Christ. This should tell us a lot about what is currently happening in the world. We know that those who are in positions of authority in the world, such as the rulers and heads of governments, will only be allowed their positions of authority if they are willing to worship the God of this world. How does Satan go about assigning people to these positions? He has put in place a vetting system that would not only ensure that only those who are fully submitted to him receive those positions, but by the time they reach a point where they are awarded their positions of authority, they are basically fully under Satan's control through demonic possession and curses that promise a quick demise to anyone should they decide to deviate from the path that are laid out before them. I'm of course talking about the secret societies, especially that of Freemasonry, that is utilized by Satan to recruit people bound and sold to him for these positions to perform his bidding. What we see on the cover of The Economist magazine for the world in 2019 is then basically a mixture of images pointing to articles contained in this magazine, with some also having a deeper meaning and pointing to the sinister plan that has been given out by the enemy through which he plans to bring about a world that will be ruled by the Antichrist. So let's see what we can discover. I'm only sharing with you what I see. My interpretation could obviously be wrong and I invite you to share anything that I may have missed in the comments below. But I also see very clear linkages to what we are told in Bible prophecy which are points that I would consider very important even if the timing might be slightly off or unknown. When the first edition of The World in 2019 came out, it had a cover that was completely black and it had nothing on it. This would seem to be quite ominous compared to what was shown on the covers of previous editions of this magazine, being really colorful. Also take into account that the cover of this magazine's predictions for The World in 2017 actually depicted events that only occurred in 2018, such as the Yellow Vest protests that reached a predicted milestone on December 1st and 2nd of 2018, just as it was depicted on the Hermit card which even contained the date shown in the constellation above the protesting yellow crowd. So we have to consider that the aspects pointed out on this latest cover may also apply to a different year than shown, for various reasons which I will get into as we continue. There are also connections between the latest cover and the cover of the World in 2017 edition. The total black cover that was featured first certainly would point to some dark times for the world in the time ahead, and this is further confirmed for us in the apocalyptic cover that replaced the previous black cover. The new cover apparently pays tribute to Leonardo da Vinci, who passed away 500 years ago, and the QR code displayed on the cell phone in one of the Vitruvian man's hands takes you to an article that is apparently an account from da Vinci, who paid a visit to the year 2019 as a time traveler.
According to The Economist magazine, they are in possession of documents supporting this claim as being true. This is probably also where we need to consider the fact that specific information conveyed through this cover is false and meant to mislead, given that we have Pinocchio with an extended nose depicted as well. The first important aspect I would like to focus on is the four horsemen that are shown on this cover. The four horsemen of the apocalypse as described to us in Revelation 6 are associated with the start of the period known as the tribulation. From a biblical perspective these would point to the following aspects and whether they apply to 2019 or some other year we will simply have to wait and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. From a biblical perspective, we see great detail regarding the conditions in the world once these horsemen are released. When we combine the information from the Word of God with the plan of the enemy, we know that the tribulation most likely starts off with an announcement of peace and safety or peace and security that will be made as explained in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. In today's world, there is one very important announcement that has been dragging out for more than a year, and that is Trump's deal of the century, or his Middle East peace plan, which has everything to do with peace and security, as can be seen in this article. From the information that has been hinted at by those in the know of what is contained in this plan, it would also seem to involve the parting of God's land that he promised to give to Abraham and his descendants as an everlasting possession. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Connecting this to what we read in the Word of God, we see how the Bible prophesies the division of God's land, or the land of Israel, attempting to break God's promise to Abraham in the process and bringing about the overflowing scourge that follows as soon as this deal is agreed to by Israel, and linking it to what we read in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. Please consider the following passages as they would all seem to be connected to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 and the announcement of this peace plan. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. 
because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Trump's deal of the century has a very high likelihood of being linked to what is written in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. And when we read the passages displayed, it is easy to see how this could lead to the start of World War III, which is described as great destruction in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. This war will probably be a very short but extremely devastating war that will usher in the new world order, which the globalists are currently steering the world towards, not knowing that the plan is also to rid the world of the pyramid to which the globalists cling in the top layers. This Antichrist will be hailed by Israel as their long-awaited Messiah, who will unite the world under him through a one-world government. There will be a one-world religion in which the Antichrist will become the ultimate object of worship, and there will be a single world currency that will require people who remain alive after this devastating war to accept the Antichrist's mark in their bodies in order to buy and sell, or face death as the alternative. This mark is hinted at by the DNA mark on the right arm of the Vitruvian man that is displayed on the cover of this magazine. The second horseman, or the red horse, represents peace being removed from the earth, and this is also emphasized in Isaiah 28 verse 18 to 19 where this vexation, or the tribulation, is described occurring from the time that Israel agrees to divide God's land. For those who believe that the world will experience a period of peace under the Antichrist's rule, it is important to keep in mind that the red horse is released as part of what will be required for the world to birth the Antichrist, and I believe this is part of the great destruction that is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5. This also lines up with the third act of the enemy's plan as laid out by Albert Pike in 1871, in which he describes the intentions of our enemy and how this will be brought about, with no mention of peace being part of this plan. This is what we read. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenda of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual and economical exhaustion. What is important is to note what follows this portion of Pike's plan. The next section, in my opinion, describes the formation of the reactionary movement that will be required to respond to the effects of World War III, and this is what the rise of the Yellow Vest protests that are currently spreading across the globe are all about and intended for. According to Pike's plan, this revolutionary movement, representing the bottom layer of the global pyramid system collapsing, have to be in place to bring about the conditions that will allow those who follow after Satan to introduce the light of Lucifer to the world. Once the land of Israel is parted and the Third World War has broken out, Based on the information in Pike's letter, this is what is planned. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, 
origin of savagery and the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization, and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Does this sound like a time of peace that will descend upon the world? Now we as Christians know that there is no way in which Satan can destroy Christianity, as God gave those who believe in Jesus as the Son of God authority over Satan, as can be seen in the following passage. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. However, we also know that our Heavenly Father has shown us in His Word that those that belong to Him are considered part of a three-part harvest, and that the third part of that harvest will be given over to Satan, and believers who belong to the third portion of this harvest will risk becoming Satan's possession forever, if they accept his mark in their bodies. And this is also the only circumstance in which a saved person could lose their salvation according to the word of God. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I explain the harvest model in more detail as part of a series and other videos that you are welcome to watch for more detail and links are provided in the description below. The third horseman or the black horse represents values that are assigned to specific harvests. The black horse would also seem to be linked to the first cover of the Economist magazine's prediction for the world in 2019. And we see another reference to this passage in the balances containing people that are held in the left hand of da Vinci's Vitruvian man. When we understand the harvest models that are described to us in the word of God, we know that those who believe that Jesus is the son of God are represented by barley, while Israel, who is a nation without any faith in Jesus, is represented by wheat. The oil represents the two witnesses who will testify during the tribulation, while the wine represents those of mixed seed, or those who have accepted the mark of the beast in their bodies, and who will have allowed their DNA to be altered, as shown on the right arm of the Vitruvian man. Those who accept this mark in their bodies, whether they are saved or unsaved, will no longer be considered human and will therefore no longer be eligible for salvation, as Jesus' righteousness is only imputed to those who are made after God's image, while those who have the mark of the beast have re-imaged themselves through their own free will after the image of the beast. Although these people may be considered superhumans once they accept the mark of the beast in their bodies, the wrath of God will await them as in the days of Noah, when the world was destroyed as a result of fallen angels corrupting the DNA or the generations of humans who were made in God's image, with only Noah and his family remaining untouched. 
References to the wheat, the barley and the outer DNA or those who represent the wine as mentioned in Revelation 6 are all shown in the imagery depicted on this cover and linking it to Revelation 6. Something else to consider which I believe is linked to what we see described in this imagery is a strange parable that Jesus gave in Matthew 13 regarding the kingdom of heaven which he compared to leaven being hidden in three measures of meal. This is what he said. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. I have always wondered why Jesus would compare the kingdom of heaven with leaven, which is always representative of sin. I believe the answer to this is found in understanding what happened to Noah and his family. Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives, were the only people remaining on earth who were perfect in their generations or who remained with God's original design in their DNA. And God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. However, it would seem that one of Noah's daughters-in-law was pregnant with the offspring of those whose DNA had been altered and this would be a good reason why Noah cursed Ham's son Canaan and not his own son Ham for his wrongdoing when Noah was drunk. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Noah's three daughters-in-law can, therefore, be considered the three measures of meal which Jesus referred to, as the entire kingdom of God came into existence through Noah and through them. But in one of these daughters-in-law there was hidden the offspring of Satan, or a hybrid being, when they entered into the ark. Canaan, who was born from Ham's wife, was most likely the product of Ham's wife being raped by a fallen angel or one of their offspring, that resulted in this leaven being hidden in the three measures of meal, and the reason for Noah cursing Canaan for Ham's transgression. God also promised to give the land of Canaan to Abraham and his seed. During the tribulation the same process will repeat, where the DNA of humanity will be completely corrupted, or where the little leaven that entered the world after Noah's flood will leaven everything on the earth except for a small remnant of Israel remaining as mortals that will enter the millennium. This process starts as soon as the main barley harvest occurs, which removes the restrainer and allows Satan to begin the gleaning process. Jesus also tells us that the same process that occurred during Noah's days will once again occur in Israel's case, where we read the following, and note specifically that the wheat harvest is mentioned in this case, and not the barley harvest. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came, and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. It would therefore seem that both the barley and the wheat harvests, or the Gentiles and the Jews, will be affected by a repeating pattern in which leaven is sown into each harvest at the start that will lead to the complete corruption of those that remain alive when Satan is released onto the earth for a little season 
and handed the third portion or the gleanings of each of these harvests as a possession. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. The word of God shows us that there are two little seasons in which Satan will receive as possession the third portion or the gleanings of each of these harvests. The first instance will occur during the tribulation where the Gentile nations or the barley harvest will be corrupted to the point where what remains of this harvest will be considered completely leavened as described by Jesus in the parable of the leaven. Secondly, another instance occurs at the end of the millennium where Satan will be released from a thousand years in prison to repeat the process with the Jewish nation, represented in the Bible as the wheat harvest, using the pattern shown to us during the days of Noah. We also have to link the harvest model to Jesus' words that he spoke in the following passage. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Which portion or portions belong to the owner of the field? The first fruits are given to God. The main harvest belongs to the owner of the field, and the corners or the gleanings of the harvest are given to the poor. So when Jesus said that of them which thou gavest me, I have lost none, Jesus could only be referring to the main harvest that belongs to him. Of that portion of the harvest none, except the son of perdition, was lost. The corners, however, are not given to Jesus, but they are given to the poor or to Satan, even though they come from the same field and have the same properties as the main harvest, which in the case of barley is believing that Jesus is the Son of God. It is important then to know what differentiates the main harvest from the corners and to ensure that you are part of those who are given to Jesus and not to be part of the corners that are given over to Satan. Once again, please watch the videos linked in the description below for more details on this. In the next video, we will look at who these people are and what could possibly be signified by their presence on the cover of this magazine. So be sure to subscribe and to click the little bell next to the subscribe button in order to be notified when the next video is uploaded. I think you will be surprised at some of the hidden messages that are conveyed by these and how these fit in with the plan of the enemy and what we read in the Word of God. Also, if you would like to support this work, you are welcome to do so at the link provided in the description below. Thank you also to all those who have supported this work over the years. We have so far been able to reach more than 30 million people who are now aware of the times that we live in and I will continue to make videos until the day that we depart from this world. Some of these require quite a bit of research and I have to do this in the time that I am not at work and that is the reason for some of the delays between the videos being released. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you and may He make His face shine upon you and give you peace that transcends all understanding. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless.